So how many of you really liked it? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is why GRID came. Uh, the, the main reason of GRID is this. It's that it's really a pain to write JavaScript code uh, without any help. So that's why GRID will help you to, to be more efficient. So we will browse through a little bit what it is, what it does, uh, the advantages, and uh, some examples, some local examples as well. So how does it work? Uh, there is one thing. How many of you have written a Java code? So if you had to compare the, the comfort of writing Java code versus writing JavaScript code in a text editor, what would you prefer? Yeah, that's it. So that's what we did with GWT. Uh, you write your code in Java using every kind of environment that is really useful, like uh, Eclipse, uh, IntelliJ, and uh, NetBeans, things like this. And then GWT will optimize that code and uh, convert it into a set of JavaScript and HTML files. So the main idea is that that JavaScript will be highly optimized. So this means that every hassle that you have, because some browsers don't behave the same way, uh, all that kind of stuff is handled by GWT. You just have to focus on your application. And uh, of course, the, all that stuff is then generated just like a regular HTML plus JavaScript website. But it's much more efficient, and you didn't have to bother about the details. So that's really the main idea. So uh, why is that useful? Well, the first thing, obviously, is that when you, when you build your application in HTML and JavaScript, and then you switch to another browser, then usually things bro break down. So um, Using GWT, it saves you a lot of time because uh, you won't have to bother about the differences between IE, Firefox, etc. Uh, another solution could be by writing your code, you add abstractions so that you take care of all the differences yourself. But this can be really uh, painful because uh, it may be a problem in terms of performance afterwards. <coughs> And uh, the other thing is that when you write JavaScript, uh, you, you don't have really an environment to develop. So uh, that's another thing that can be interesting. So uh, if you look at uh, GWT in real life, it's Eclipse, for instance. So you just created a structure. So all that stuff has been created automatically, which means, uh, for instance, uh, this has been generated, the GWT demo. And then you have just uh, pieces of code where you can write in there. So this is the basic thing is that because it's in Eclipse, you have code completion, for instance. So for instance, you start with button, and then you have, just like in Eclipse, just like in Java, the same thing, set of features. You can select your method and have the documentation available. The other thing is the hosted mode. So you can run the application locally. So this is all Java. And uh, you have something like a browser, which is available. And then you can modify the code right here, right now, refresh the page, and it works. Um, that's nice as well. But then there's something that can be painful as well, is that tracking that little bug that you have in your JavaScript code. So to do that, what you can do is run it as a debugger. So this time, I ran a debug session. And uh, once I launched my application, I will click on the button. And then it, it seems to be stalled. But what happens is that in my Eclipse, I am in the code, and um, I can keep on, watch some variables. Here we go. So you really have a development environment, and you have a debugger, and you can do everything in Java, and then it gets translated to efficient JavaScript. 
So that's the, well my, one of the main advantages of uh, GWT. Uh, the other thing that can be interesting when you're writing code in a, a serious way, I would say, is add a lot of testing features. So you, you will test all the functionalities, have a testing framework, and um, so this is possible as well with Git, because all the Java Java side can take care can um, leverage the standard G unit uh, testing framework, and uh, you can also use a GWT test case so that you can test the same features in JavaScript as in Java. Uh, one of the main thing with JavaScript is that you can do a lot of things, but at the end, it's running on the client. So if you don't want the client to be 100% CPU all the time, you have to optimize your JavaScript code. Uh, this can be painful because this is not what you want to build. You want to build an application. You don't want to build something that really uh, works uh, faster on a, on a browser, it's not your issue. So that's why uh, we provide with GWT optimized code in JavaScript. So you just have to write the logic and GWT will optimize everything. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can write any kind of code. Your code should, should be optimized from a Java point of view, but then uh, it will get translated in JavaScript optimized code. So the, the main feature on GWT is deferred binding. So what it means is that you will, um, when you run an application on a browser, you will have to load different modules depending on the browser, the operating system, the language. And as you will have to download all that code, what we would like to avoid is to download all the possibilities, like uh, if I'm on a Firefox browser, for instance, I don't want to download any Internet Explorer specifics. If I'm downloading the resources for Arabic, I don't have to download the specifics for French. So this is kind of difficult in JavaScript, but with a deferred, deferred binding mechanism, it's possible. So the, the way it works is that it takes your Java code and makes small pieces of code that will be specific to one specific situation. And then, depending on the settings of your browser, you will download only the, the things that are really needed. So, for instance, you write your code once in Java, and then depending on the browser, you will download specifics for the specific browser, and then specifics for the local your browser is uh, set on. So this means that you will load a lot of small files with all the resources that just match your situation. You don't have to download the full set of possibilities. And uh, so it, it's used within GWT, but you can use it as well. So uh, the way it works, you have one method in GWT which will create a class, uh, like the this class, the HTTP request implementation class. Oops. Uh, and then, depending on the settings, you will see that, uh, for instance, if it's uh, depending on the user agent, which is over here, if it's IE6, I will download a specific implementation on, of that class. So it really makes it possible for you to foresee all the situations and to have the, the right implementation for those situations. Usually you don't have to bother about it. Uh, you will just use it for internationalization. Um, yeah. So another advantage is that you can build your full interface just by manipulating high level objects like a pop-up. And GWT will then take care of the specifics using the default binding. Uh, but you don't have to uh, worry about the, the thing that is below. You just have to write the first uh, sentence. The other thing that can happen with a browser, if your JavaScript application is a little bit complex, you may notice that after a while, your browser just crashes or gets slower and slower. So this is usually done, uh, due to memory leaks in all kind of places. So if you use uh, GWT from the beginning to the end, 
you will not have uh, memory leaks because the, the optimized code is taking care of it. Uh, you may have to call a few uh, specific uh, functions in JavaScript, in native JavaScript that may uh, put some problems, but at least you can isolate the places that are really risky. Uh, another f uh, nice thing is uh, the possibility to reuse code. So when you're writing your interface, you can define high level elements of interface and then uh, this, um, refine it to specific usages. So that's, um, I don't know, if, can you read it in the back? Probably, yeah, okay. So the main, uh, for instance, I will just create a, an element of uh, UI that is just an abstract class that just has to, um, to provide a specific description of the panel. And then I will be able to create subclasses which all will have a different behavior but will use the same set of features of that uh, Gmail disclosure panel. So for instance, to have this one, I will just say that in that panel, I will add a label and then a text box, and uh, that's it. So uh, it's really easy to use uh, an existing UI element and to add some specific features and to reuse that new element as the base of your de development. So you, you see it in the demo afterwards. Um, yeah, the composite is just a way to build UI elements out of smaller UI elements. So to show you a little bit what is possible with uh, WIT, we set up that website. So this is all the features that are in the UI available in WIT. So you have checkboxes, radio buttons, uh, panels, dialogues. So all that stuff is really JavaScript. And uh, while you all know that having that kind of result with JavaScript can be quite a pain, so it's really a few lines of Java code now. And uh, just to show you that it's getting further, you can switch, uh, for instance, to Arabic. And have the right to left without any pain. So this is really easy to do. I will show you the piece of code doing it. So what I can do when I define the URL, there is a specific tag that I can add, which is called local. Yep. Equals AR. And then my element is there. I'm sorry for the translation, I'm not speaking Arabic. I know it's wrong, <laughs> uh, but the main idea is that all I had to do was to add one line of code in my quit code, just to say that um, for this interface now, because Arabic is right to left, just put all the elements in the right to left mode. So you don't have to bother about any problem. Uh, it takes care of everything. And for the settings and localization, we can see it afterwards in the demo as well. So yeah, just to summarize, um, it's yeah, it's really a nice way to have optimized high, high performance AJAX code. As a developer, you have plenty of things that you don't have to care about anymore, and uh, you can reuse the code to write many applications using the same effort only once. So just a few more features. Uh, when you're using a browser, usually the thing that is really annoying is that users don't always click on the links in the page. They sometimes use the back button in the, in the browser. So taking care of that browser can be an issue as well. So this is totally supported in Grid. So you just have to add history items, and then you can browse through the history. 
The other thing that is really, really nice if your backend is in Java is that usually when you make AJAX calls from the client to the server, uh, what happens is that you have some complex object that you want to send over to the server using the network. Then comes the serialization, deserialization issue, so you have to take care of how can I translate my object in a bunch of text that I can send over the wire to the server. Uh, using uh, GWT in, in Java, you just have to implement uh, the servlet on the server side and the callback function on the client side. And between the two, you will exchange Java objects and you won't see the full mechanism of translation of that object into text and from that text to object. Serialization, serialization, deserialization is taken care of. So that's really interesting. So I'm running out of time. I wanted to show you a few samples. So those are applications that exist out there to manage uh, hierarchies. Uh, an ERP even has been written in uh, GWT. Some people wrote an Office suite and many, many other applications, but um, I've got, where is it? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm looking for Sari, I didn't see you. Okay, so Sari is going to show you one of it. An one of the applications that he built with GWT and explain you uh, what really happened. Thank you.